the Cavs. The Knicks are kicking their ass. The the Knicks are absolutely kicking the ass of the Cleveland Cavaliers. And look, I it's funny. I can't remember who said this. Was, there was someone on on Twitter that said this, and it's like, all right, this isn't doesn't really apply. It was something like, I don't ever want to hear about defensive rating again. And it's like, well, but that is the best way to. That's how we measure their defense, defense like, has been great most of the playoffs. Their offense is ass. Like yes. it, it is. I mean, Darius Garland was the only thing working in in game four like the only thing working and when the ball was in donovan's hands it was stagnant as hell and when the ball was, especially in the third quarter um i, I actually thought jb bickerstaff made a mistake like darius garland picked up a couple quick fouls early and he sat him and it's like dude your point guard is not going like this isn't like evan mobley or jared allen picking up two quick fouls and you're like okay well they're going to keep attacking like it's darius garland how many times does he foul out how many times is he in foul trouble? I think you have to trust your point guard in that situation to not be uh, someone who's just going to keep racking up fouls, even if they're going at him. Like you can play that in a certain way. And so once Darius Garland was back on the floor in the third quarter, he was killing the Knicks defense, killing, like just shredding them left and right, getting any shot he wanted, setting up guys for dunks so easily. And, and uh, like Donovan Mitchell admitted after the game, he played like shit. Um, but like, you guys are about done because the Knicks have completely outclassed the Cavs in the series. Yeah, that that yeah, one I, Garland stretch was the only moment where their offense looked at all lively. It's the only time he, it looked good, yeah. He was unreal during that stretch. Like mm-hmm. they tried every coverage against him. He was picking apart every single one. And then I to me this whole series has come down to the Knicks just have more options because they have more viable players. Yeah. The Cavaliers, they're running out Levert. They're running out Osman. They're running out Okoro. They need a not, wing so bad. They have no good options. They have nobody to make shots to stop the double teams on Donovan Mitchell, which are a big reason why he struggled the way he has. Mm-hmm. And then the other piece is like their first shot defense has been incredible. They are getting pounded on the glass. Yeah. They they need to do a much better job on the glass. And it's tough because Mitchell Robinson is a force. The Knicks are big. They're physical. But you have to do a better job on the glass. And then they just had so many, like, scouting report errors, especially against R.J. Barrett. Like, right. close out short Barrett, against man. Barrett, who shot 31% from three. Don't let him get straight line drive to the rim he got like five or six it, in like a were just row, so dude, it, was it was just wild. time i'm like yeah. what the? it was I, see, I think the problem is just mainly like this is a young team they're relying on a young vet in donovan mitchell who mm. you could say had a excellent um regular season but still lacks intangibles to lead a team to you know sit to solely do it by himself. And that's not the possibility of it. You know what I mean? Like he's going to get his points. He does that. But when mm. it comes to making everybody better and doing the other things, it's not really working. And then the idea of Chetty Osman having to guard Brunson, that's been a nightmare. You know what I mean? You would think that that would be Karis LeVert's role or somebody else. And, you know, once well, he's the been Knicks... getting toasted too. Oh but man. Coral, it's, isn't the Coral's only attribute is that he's a defender. Yeah, but I yes. mean, I just okay. think that they, I matter. think they just have too much, and you know, with Josh Hart getting and, a starting job, yeah. that's his job to take now. And the Knicks are just um, like Okoro. You can have every wide open corner three you want, like take should. them all. As yeah, take o- take them all. Like we do not trust that you're going to do anything to us. Mm-hmm. You're not Tory Craig. Yeah, no, for and sure. I mean, thing, go ahead, go ahead. Well, just one of the things you know. This is also a relatively young coach. In, in Bickerstaff too. Like, I mm-hmm. think we, we, I know he's been around a long time. He's been like the interim coach hall of fame because he's had so many of those, those, that title so many times. But the fact is like, this is one of the first times it felt like this is actually his team and his job. Mm-hmm. And he's a young coach too. Like, he's I feel a really like good coach. He's a really, a really good, good coach. coach. I, there's a lot of people out there already going, trying to replace him. And I think that's too early. I think this is just one of those things. He's got to learn and grow with this team. And- in that sense, I think it's a little like not it's kind of a little bit wild already to start trying to fire Bickerstaff after one playoff series when they didn't have a complete roster. Is anyone actually also, trying to do that though? I don't think anyone's actually trying how, to do that. How many I mean, options I, does he have? Like that's people are mad at him for starting Chris Levert. It's like who who is he supposed to put in there? 
Yeah. Like, he can't play. Rubio's yeah, been yeah. useless in the series. Like, Levert has had one game where he was good. Um, as Trey mentioned, like, Osmond is, like, their best end-of-game defensive option against Jalen Brunson. Like, there's just not much. What, are you going to put in Dean Wade or something? Like, you can't You can't do that. I mean, they and have no you Alex at, Len. And they then you no look Alex at Len. They have no Sasha Pavlovich. <laughs> like, there's a lot of, a lot of holes here. No Ira Nubel. No Ira Nubel, And then you look man. at the Knicks supporting <laughs> cast, and it's such a huge gap. And the Knicks, like, they have more shooting. They have guys who can make plays off the bounce. Like, Josh Hart is infinitely better than any secondary creator the Cavs have. And I'm I'm including Mitchell and Mo Mitchell and Garland as yeah. their primary creators. Like Josh Hart put him in there, all of a sudden you have more options. You you can do different things. They don't have anybody that they can trust on offense. They don't have anybody to alleviate the pressure on their main guys. And that just makes it so tough to score against really a, a tough, tough Knicks team. 